And that's enough about the special military operation. Now for something different, a special report on new drivers at a tank school outside Moscow. Come on, lift it. Soon you'll be doing this for real. This week's wave of elite Russian tank crews are about to leave this specialist site to defeat NATO in the Kursk region. Seen here undertaking a comprehensive three-day intensive course in armoured warfare, these recruits come from all parts of remote, non-urbanised rural Russia. Vatnik today has been granted special access to this facility and the state-of-the-art vehicles and simulators that prepare the soldiers for war with the West. We had the privilege of speaking with their course commander on a very busy day of instruction. Right, that one there, that's the throttle, okay? And that way is Kiev, all right? Good luck. So yeah, I've been instructing here for the past year um, after achieving 300 confirmed kills against Abrams tanks. Um, you know that uh, Ukrainian counter-offensive last year? Well, uh, that was stopped by none other than me. So obviously they decided to put my skills to good use and uh, now I'm training all the new recruits um, and upping their skill level in things such as uh, field medicine. So if the casualty hasn't asked already, you uh, load your rifle and blow them away regardless. Taking care of prisoners of war. Uh, right, can I get any more uh, volunteers? And uh, yeah, you know, anti-drone anti warfare. Yep, look, there's one. Oh, for God's sake, guys, come on. It's not an Iraqi wedding. Just leave the target and shoot the drone. And yeah, let's just say uh, so far we've had no complaints from uh, those who have trained here. Um, in fact, we've had no feedback at all, you know, which, which must be a good thing. You know, they're off having a great time. OK, so you know where the fire controls are. Yep. Um, just wait for me to get clear, because uh, this North Korean ammo can be a bit uh, temperamental. Ah, no, actually, I do tell a lie. We have had some really positive feedback, um, really sort of praising the tactics and strategies that we're using. Um, oddly, it seems to come from a lot of Ukrainian accounts, but, you know, at this point, I'll take any praise I can get. Ah. Zelensky, 69. Thanks very much. All in a day's work. Smiley face, heart. Nice guy. So uh, many of the troops are about to pass out today, but um, that is heat exhaustion for you. Um, for those who do wake up, they will be graduating this elite tanking school. Um, and, you know, who knows what heights these men will reach. I've seen some go at least 200 metres straight up, but it really depends on the amount of explosives that are still left in the tank at the time of detonation. I mean, talk about passing with flying colours. Yeah, this, uh, this course being only three days long, you know, Many of the men probably won't see any combat. You know, I imagine we're going to be in Kiev in two days, two and a half max. You, are you looking for more Squire content? Well, of course you are. Look no further than www.squire.army. Enlist today at any rank from private to field marshal and access everything from weekly blog posts to mini podcasts, behind the scenes looks, outtakes and exclusive early access to merchandise. Free to captains and above. And if that isn't enough, enlist at the appropriate rank and we'll replace battle-damaged mugs, pay for you to join us at museum visits and even get you in a sketch with your own character that you can name and help write the lines and personality for. Oh, this video is effectively sponsored by our own website as opposed to any other sponsor. Effectively, you are our sponsor and we thank you very much. We've already got a hell of a lot of content Content on the site, so get yourself down to the recruitment office and enlist today. Yes. But some recruits are less eager than others to fulfill their national and contractual obligations. We spoke to one traitor protesting his innocence from a holding cell. Now, this whole ordeal began when my conscription papers apparently came through the post some months ago. But I'd recently acquired a dog who must have eaten them. The authorities then came to recruit me from my workplace in Novgorod, but concerned that my dog might have ingested a legal document, I had just left my desk and rushed to the nearest available veterinary practice, 950 kilometers away, in Kazakhstan. The authorities then intercepted my car at the border crossing, 
where I had broken down. I was laid prone in the boot, attempting to fix the fault, when luckily the border guards picked me up. In the ensuing interrogation, I was found to have unfortunately suffered a bout of momentary amnesia, whilst carrying my 72-year-old father's passport. This meant I was found fit for active service and sent to the front line for the first time. So we have lots of new recruits that come through and do the course. Um, obviously many of them are quite nervous. They've seen Western uh, propaganda, which talks about the turrets of the tanks just detaching themselves at will. Um, but actually it's part of a very cunning modification that we've come up with, um, which is anti-drone technology. You see, we have a ring of explosives within the turret of the tank, which when drones are detected, the explosives set off, launching the turret high into the air, squirting the crew out and creating a red mist which blind the drones before the turret impacts the drone and uh, eliminates it. Um, it's all quite clever really. Um, we've also been experimenting with new helmets and caps for the tank crew which are made to be impenetrable to drones. So obviously, obviously all of this has been really effective, um, this new technology, because the the drones have been so eliminated that they can't even collect the reels of film from them to prove it. Um, you know, it's just some of the modifications that are happening in the Ukraine direction. Okay, so next up we're going to be covering uh, how to apply the latest package of defensive radioactive armour blocks to vehicles. Don't you mean reactive? No, no, these uh, state-of-the-art corrugated sheets were looted from Chernobyl, um, so they help the tanks glow in the dark, you know, as will you once you've uh, finished applying them. But don't worry, it's all been cleared with HR. Well, I was walking along one day, minding my business, when I spot a load of tanks sitting in storage, and being the entrepreneurial type, I stripped them for parts and sold them to the Chinese, which was rather profitable, actually. I then used my newfound wealth to dodge the draft and become the head of HR which in itself is another moneymaker. I still deal on the side, obviously. Yeah, I thought I'd never get shot of that reactor for roofing, which is good really because everything started to taste of metal around here and I started leaking out of my arsehole. Ah, oh, hello, Private. Look, can you help get me out of here? I'll do anything. Absolutely can do, no worries at all. Here's your new driving license and your new passport. So, yeah, you're from Moscow and never should have been conscripted in the first place. That'll be 6,000 US dollars, please. Last week, I came across something of a human resource gold mine, as it happens. Yeah, and the best part is, you don't even need mining gear. Just dental tools. Yeah, it's a war in Ukraine. Not business. Technically, I've died three times on the front line. Don't tell the authorities. Yeah, my mum's got three cars on the driveway at home. Neighbours are very jealous. When I finally arrived at the front line as a tank driver, I was reprimanded for cowardice during a firefight. Nothing could have been further from the truth. It all started when I was inspecting the underside of my assigned tank, in order to find my lost wristwatch. I can only assume it came off during a vicious hand-to-hand -hand fight with the enemy. While underneath the tank, I burst into tears as I realised my watch was indeed broken. I was heard screaming for my mother as it was a sentimental gift from her. I then left the front line at haste to find a reputable watch repair shop, but was falsely arrested before I made it further than a mere 25 kilometers. I was given the option of prison or retraining as a tank battalion commander. So reluctantly, I chose to come here and train for a leadership role. So yeah, we, we have had some criticism uh, that we're using old, outdated Soviet stock. Um, but I assure you that is just enemy propaganda. Um, this is a state-of-the-art facility. Um, we are equipped with 500 uh, T-14 Armata tanks. Um, you know, look, there's, there's one out there. There. Yeah, obviously you can't see it, you know, past the, the Humvee and all the other captured American rubbish because of the stealth uh, capabilities. Just too damn good. Um, but yeah, don't worry, it can see you. Can we see inside of this new miracle vehicle? Uh, yeah, but you know, we'll have to, we'll have to blur out some things. So here we are inside a T-14 Armata tank. Um, very, very highly advanced stuff. Uh, a lot of this 
is a good 30 or 40 years ahead of any American technology. Um, basically impervious from the outside. I mean, you know, the only way this tank could be taken out is uh, you know, if, uh, if you left the flaps open. Oh. I'm sorry we appear to have lost contact there temporarily with the uh, tank school. I'm sure he's absolutely fine. Look, yeah, he's absolutely fine. In other news, the Black Sea Fleet has commissioned a new submarine. Hello everybody, we sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, just a couple of quick shout outs for the end of this one. Firstly, a sincerely well-rounded salute to all the members who have enlisted in our Squire Army. Yes, especially our captains and Peter Height. Hope I got that name right, Sebastian, but it's my army and I'll call you what I please. We'd also like to shout out the Norfolk Tank Museum. Yes which we filmed at for this one. Uh, brilliant little place, run by a man called Stephen, who is delightful. They have a fully functional, working replica of a First World War tank and loads of other stuff. And they have a yearly armor fest where loads of people and tanks come together uh, for a big uh, display. It's really very good. We're there every single year. So a big shout out to them. Go and check out their website, uh, linked below. And secondly, Armageddon in Leicestershire. Would you like to do tank paintball for a stag do you've got coming up or something? Then go there. They're fantastic, and they also have a brilliant museum with loads of stuff. Again, their website will be linked below. Do go and check them out. Uh, we've filmed at both places so many times, and we often shout these guys out because they're without them we really couldn't film a lot of this sort of stuff. So yeah, big shout-outs to both places. Go and check them out. Yes, cheerio.